Alabama A&M coming off of the 38-17 win over Grambling State to improve to 5-0. and And the Bulldogs are on the road this week at Mississippi Valley State. Coach, your reflections from Saturday and looking forward to your next game. Well, I mean, um, it was a big game for us, of course. Um, had a lot riding on the line. Um, you know, it was our Lewis Cruz Classic. And a uh, big game for us, third annual. And um, we knew Gremlin um, would come in here ready to play. Doug would have him ready to play, and he did. Um, and we knew how important it was for us to um, try to get on top and, and uh, um, try to get control of this ball game early. And, um, you know, they they opened up the drive. Uh, the opening drive, they kind of took it down the field on us. And, uh but our bend but don't break uh, defense was able to force a turnover. <clears throat> that, was, that was probably the turning point. And I know, I know it was very early in the ball game, but it probably was the turning point uh, in the game um, because once we were able to do that, we took our opening play and uh, threw a touchdown pass. And uh, uh, from that point on, we kind of never looked back. And uh, but they were, I mean, they were really getting after us that opening drive, and we were able to uh, get that turnover. And I, I really believe that was, uh, although it was very early in the game, but I really think that was a major turning point in the game. Um, um, you know, we 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 struck real fast offensively, and uh, they just weren't able to answer that. And before you know it, the momentum was really on our side, and we made a few plays. And um, you know, they, as always, they played hard, but. Um, our kids were really fired up, and we got a few really big plays early going. And, uh, that kind of created that separation. Um, this this upcoming week, uh, we get to go to Valley, uh, play them. I believe it's their homecoming. Uh, it's going to be a lot of people there. It's going to be one of those emotional games. Um, Valley defensively is playing exceptional football. Um, you know, we got to go there and try to find a way to um, give, us, give ourselves a chance to be successful. Um, so uh, we'll work hard, try to get ready uh, for the adversity that we know we're going to face. Um, the the weather to be a little warmer than what than what we're used to. Um, you know, their crowd will be there, which will make this an emotional game for them, and they'll be really. Um, fired up, ready to play us, and uh, again, coach has them really going. Uh, they're playing really good football, particularly on the defensive side, and uh, we just got to find a way to go down there and, and compete with them and, and um, try to come away with a victory. It's going to be tough. All right, the floor is open for questions for Coach Anthony Jones from Alabama A&M University. Make sure you take your phone off hook, off um, off of the mute if you're going to ask a question. Hey, Coach, this is Mike McCall from the Baton Rouge How are you doing? I'm fine. How are you? Good. Um, you guys only had two turnovers this year, I think. Could you just talk about how big of an advantage that is for your team? I mean, it's a huge advantage. Um, two things we, we really worked on this, this off season was turnovers, uh, creating them and not creating them. And, you know, and it's hard to do. Uh, and, and the, um, you know, when you're practicing because on the defensive side, you're pulling for turnovers. On the offensive side, you're pulling for the guys to take care of the football. So, you know, when they happen one way or the other, you know, you got to ride that emotional fence. Uh, you know, when the defense creates from turnovers, uh, you got to give them credit, but at the same time, you're upset about the offense. So, uh, that was something we really, really spent a lot of time on this, um, past off season. And then the other thing we spent a lot of time on is our red zone efficiency. Uh we felt like we were we were having success moving the ball and and um um we get down to the red zone and we come away where we had to kick field goals and things of that sort and and uh those were really major turning points in the game. We felt like um uh we went back and looked at it last year every time we 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 threw a t we gave up a turnover our opposing team um, somehow um, was able to get it in the end zone, and that was uh, and that was a that was something that we really really felt like we had to um, get under wraps. So so far, all that preaching, all that talking about 
turnovers and being more efficient uh, is paying off, and uh, and it's paying off in a way that is, is helping us to, to win a lot of ball games. And for Deontay to be leading the conference in passing yards per game, uh, passing percentage, and also has zero interceptions, what has allowed him to be that efficient? Well, I mean, you know, you got to – there's a lot of things involved in it. Number one, it has to start with his decision-making process, okay? Number two, the uh, everybody else has to fall into that boat, if you will, and, 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 and try to um, – um, you know, make sure they buy into this uh, this thing about uh, taking care of the football efficiency and things of that sort. And then, you know, a lot of people don't like to talk about it, but it is what it is. You know, you have to have, you got to have a little, um, lack of better words, a uh, little luck involved. You know, there were some opportunities that we played a few games that got a couple of guys that, you know, we threw the ball, he made a mistake and made a bad read and threw the ball in some other folks' hands that, you know, ordinarily we don't want them throwing them to, and um, you know they weren't they were unsuccessful in getting them in. But you know, every now and then on the defensive side, you know you think you know guys are going to defensive guys are going to end up dropping balls, but uh, you just got to get lucky sometimes. And and so far we we've been able to get, we've been able to do that. And hey, coach, yes, uh, no, go ahead. Oh. I'm sorry. Coach, this is Travis down with the Clearing Ledger. Just, if you could, what stands out when you look at that Valley defense? Uh, maybe some of their strengths that you see. Um, number one thing they do, man, is their effort. Um, they get after folks. Um, Coach Morgan has them going. I'm telling you, they will get after you, and not just um, you know a, a, a series. They watch these guys play, and they play hard. <laughs> All the time, they don't shy away from contact. They don't shy away from, uh, um, you know, the opponents. Nothing, man. They just uh, that's that's that jumps out at me. They they just get after folks, and uh, you know, this is they they understand or they seem to understand the concept of um, of a, um, a team defense. And so, you know, whenever you whenever you got guys flying around. Uh, getting after folks, um, you know, you can create problems for your opponent, your opposing team, and uh, and they do that. You know, no one has really uh, dominated them uh, as far as uh, you know them being on the defensive side. They they get they just get after folks. Thanks. One more question for Coach Jones. Coach Jones, how you doing? This is Donald Hunt, man. Philadelphia. I'm fine. How are you? All right, man. Listen, man, you've been at Alabama A&M for over 10 years now, man. I mean, what's, what's been the, you know, uh, looking back and, you know, not only this season but last season, and what's been uh, some of the keys to your success, man? Well, you know, I, it's, it's been a blessing for me to be here. Uh, this is my 11th season here. Um, I've seen a, uh, a lot of people – come and go in this conference, if you will, and some even came back after they went. Um, you know, it's, it's just been a blessing for me to daughters granted me this uh, longevity, you know, particularly at one institution. It's, it's kind of unheard of, but, um, you know, it's been that way. Uh, I think the secret has been, um, you know, I have to give some credit, uh, give credit to the Lord for guiding and protecting me here. Um, uh, you know, and I, I think that I think another part of it has been my staff. Uh, and, you know, some of the kids that we recruit, you know, we recruit a certain way. We try to train our kids a certain way, uh, and we try to retain our kids a certain way. You know, we we try to keep once once we get kids into our program, we try to give them a chance to grow, and uh, and that's been a um, uh, a major step for us, a major uh, hurdle for us. It has helped our um, uh, you know, I'd be one of the best team, one of the best uh, schools uh, as far as our APR is concerned. Because once we get a kid in our program, we're going to give them an opportunity to grow uh, and, and and learn about football and about life. And, uh, and the more these kids grow, um, you know, sometimes it takes time, but the more they grow, they um, the more they understand what you're trying to get done, and um, 
and, that, and that's kind of what's happening here. We got a, a senior late, uh, late in team, um, and a lot of them are fifth-year seniors. They've been in our program for an extended period of time, and so not only do they understand one another, one another, they understand us, and we kind of understand them too. So we're all we're almost always on the same page now. Yeah. And how much does a guy like Robert Baffis, man, when he comes back and gets his degree at Alabama A and M, um, you know, what what kind of impression does that make on the kid? I mean, here's a guy that's been in the Super Bowl, or Pro Bowl, and it's just done some great things at the next level, but you know, also found time to come back and get his degree. Well, I mean, you know, a lot of people try to look at that as something in passing and not give it a lot of, quote, thought or whatever. Uh, we're just the opposite. Um, for him to come back here at Alabama A&M University and complete his education here, uh, when Robert first went up there, um, I, I went up to Indianapolis for some uh, uh, some um, business up there with the NCAA um, one of those clinics or something, and uh, and I got with Robin. We sat down and we talked. The first thing I talked to him about was, um, you know, we talked about this before, finishing his degree. I told him to leave the institution in good standing, and he did. And I talked about what he wants to do, and he talked about possibly coaching. And I told him, I said, Robert, uh, point blank, it's me and you talking. Um, if you don't go back and get your degree, um, I said, you can make the Pro Bowl and all these things and this and that and that and that. But without your degree, I couldn't hire you, okay? And the thing that he had done was kept his uh, his options open. He didn't leave the institution in bad academic standards, which was the number one thing I talked to him about doing, and he did that because I knew he was going to revisit this path, and I knew his mom uh, wanted him to revisit this path, and so, and he has, and then to go back and validate, get his degree from Alabama A&M and validate his, uh, it just validates our institution, uh, it validates him as a guy who, um, who understood his purpose here at college, but also went back and, um, um, and finished his degree, and I, I just think it's a great story for him. All right, we um like to thank Coach Jones.